The Foundational Crisis At the turn of the 20th century, math was in trouble. It was undergoing what came to be called the foundational crisis of mathematics. At the time, set theory had come to serve as the foundation of mathematics. All mathematical proofs ultimately relied on it. But in 1899, Ernst Zermelo noticed this set theory had a fatal flaw. Zermelo told other math professors at the University of Göttingen about it, including David Hilbert, but Zermelo didn't publish it. In 1901, Bertrand Russell also noticed this flaw. But Russell didn't stay quiet. He wrote a letter in 1902 to Gottlob Frege, just as his second volume on set theory was going off to the publisher. Frege had spent decades laying the foundation of set theory. It was his life's work. But one letter, showing one flaw, brought it all down. Russell showed Frege's set theory allows two contradictory statements to both be proved. This flaw is known as Russell's paradox. One flaw might not sound so bad, but in math it is fatal. For if in math, just one falsehood can be proved, then any falsehood can be proved. This is known as the principle of explosion. For example, assume mathematics had a flaw that allowed you to prove that 2 plus 2 equals 5. You could use this false proof to prove anything. You could prove that the $1 in your bank account equals $1 million. Starting with 2 plus 2 equals 5, subtract 4 from both sides. Then you get 0 equals 1, now multiply both sides by 999,999. Then you get 0 equals 999,999, now add 1 to both sides. You have now proven 1 equals 1 million. If math allowed proofs of false statements, then contracts, commerce, even society as we know it, couldn't function. This was the state of mathematics in 1900, it's no wonder it was considered a crisis. Math was broken. It had to be fixed. It needed a rallying cry. A call to action. In 1900, mathematicians from around the world gathered in Paris for the International Congress of Mathematicians. David Hilbert, considered the greatest mathematician of his time, was invited to speak. He used the opportunity to present what he considered to be the 23 most significant open problems in mathematics. The second of Hilbert's problems called for a proof that the foundational rules of mathematics were free of contradictions. This would, once and for all, put math on a solid foundation. Never again would mathematicians need worry that a new contradiction might one day surface and torpedo the whole of mathematics. New Foundations The collapse of Frege's set theory and Hilbert's call for a provably solid foundation for math served as an inspiration. Under Hilbert's direction, Zermelo began work on fixing set theory. Similarly, Bertrand Russell began work with his supervisor, Alfred North Whitehead, on a solution. Their aim was to lay a new foundation for mathematics based on a precise logic, and produce a set theory rid of paradoxes and contradictions. It was a massive undertaking that took over a decade. It culminated in the three-volume tome Principia Mathematica, published in 1910, 1912, and 1913. It was so detailed, that it famously required several hundred pages to work up to the point where it proved 1 plus 1 equals 2. Owing to its complexity and unique notation, Principia Mathematica never gained much popularity with mathematicians. It also had a competitor. By 1908, Zermelo developed a new set theory, consisting of just eight rules. And in 1921, it was further improved by Abraham Frankel. Their combined result is called zermelo frankel set theory. It became the default foundation of mathematics, and remains so to this day. Hilbert's program 
although no one had discovered contradictions in either Russell's or Zamello's new foundational systems, no one had been able to prove they were free of contradictions either. Mathematics, still rested on a foundation of uncertain stability. This led Hilbert, in 1921, to push for finding a mathematical theory that was provably consistent. And not only did he want this theory to be provably consistent, he wanted it to be provably complete. A complete system of mathematics means any true statement can be proven within that theory. There would never be a need to add to this complete theory, as it would cover everything that mathematicians might think up in the future. It would be a final theory and the last theory any mathematician would ever need. It was the mathematician's equivalent of a theory of everything, where all of mathematics is derivable from one rock-solid foundation. The effort to find this theory became known as Hilbert's program. It was a noble goal. But less than a decade after launching his program, Hilbert's dream of a final theory was shattered. In 1930, at a conference in Königsberg, Hilbert remained confident in the eventual success of his program, proclaiming, Via Musen Wissen. Via Verden Wissen, we must know. We will know. The phrase would later be Hilbert's epitaph. Gödel's Incompleteness Theorems Unknown to Hilbert, his dream had already been crushed. The day before, at the very same conference, the 24-year-old Kurt Gödel presented his PhD thesis. It proved Hilbert's dream is impossible. At the conference Gödel presented his first incompleteness theorem. It showed that in any finite mathematical foundation, there will be true statements that can't be proved in that theory. Thus Hilbert's dream of completeness is impossible. Quote, the most comprehensive current formal systems are the system of Principia Mathematica, PM, on the one hand, the zamello frankelian axiom system of set theory on the other hand. These two systems are so far developed that you can formalize in them all proof methods that are currently in use in mathematics, i.e. you can reduce these proof methods to a few axioms and deduction rules. Therefore, the conclusion seems plausible that these deduction rules are sufficient to decide all mathematical questions expressible in those systems. We will show that this is not true. End quote. Kurt Gödel in on formally undecidable propositions of Principia Mathematica and Related Systems 1, 1931. Gödel's first incompleteness theorem showed there could never be a final theory that would serve mathematicians for all time. Gödel wasn't finished. Shortly thereafter, he published his second incompleteness theorem. This proved that no consistent theory of mathematics can ever prove itself to be consistent. The second of Hilbert's 23 problems was impossible. This explained the failure of Zamello in proving the consistency of his set theory. It was actually a good sign that he was unable to, had he been able to prove it consistent, it would imply that it was not. So now, not only was completeness impossible, but it was also impossible for a theory to prove its own consistency. This was a double whammy to Hilbert. Hilbert lived another 12 years but he never publicly acknowledged Gödel's result. Privately, he was crushed, he didn't want mathematics to be this way. But others greatly admired Gödel and his achievement. When Harvard gave Gödel an honorary degree, he was introduced as the discoverer of the most significant mathematical truth in the century. Some called Gödel the greatest logician since Aristotle. Edward Nelson called Aristotle the greatest logician before Gödel. John von Neumann said, Gödel is absolutely irreplaceable, he is the only mathematician alive about whom I would dare make this statement. Einstein and Gödel both worked at the Institute for Advanced Study. Near the end of his life, Einstein confided to Oscar Morgenstern that his own work no longer meant much, that he came to the Institute merely to have the privilege of walking home with Gödel. Undecidability. In 1673, 
Leibniz invented and later built the first digital calculator. He declared, it is beneath the dignity of excellent men to waste their time in calculation when any peasant could do the work just as accurately with the aid of a machine. After he built the device, Leibniz began to wonder about the limits of what machines can calculate, was it possible to build a machine that could answer any mathematical question. Several centuries later, David Hilbert together with Wilhelm Ackermann refined Leibniz's question. At a conference in Berlin in 1928, they defined the Entscheidungsproblem, or decision problem. The decision problem asks, is it possible to build a machine that can decide whether or not any mathematical question can be proved in some mathematical system? Gödel showed that not every true statement was provable, but was there a way to decide whether or not a statement was provable? It was an important question. Such a method would be most useful to mathematicians. It would tell them when they ought to give up, and thereby save them from wasting their lives searching for proofs that don't exist. Alonzo Church got the first result on the Onchadum's problem. He defined a programming language, and proved certain questions about it are undecidable. Quote, it follows that the Onchadum's problem is unsolvable in the case of any system of symbolic logic which is consistent, in the sense of Gödel. Alonzo Church in An Unsolvable Problem of Elementary Number Theory, 1935. The next year, Church's student, Alan Turing, published another example of an undecidable problem, the halting problem. Quote, Gödel has shown that there are propositions you such that neither you nor, not you, is provable. On the other hand, I shall show that there is no general method which tells whether a given formula U is provable. Alan Turing it on computable numbers, with an application to the Onchadum's problem, 1936. It was in this paper that Turing introduced the concept of a general purpose programmable computer, birthing the digital age. Hilbert never got the answers he hoped for. We can't prove the consistency of a mathematical foundation. We can't prove everything that is true, and given undecidability, we can't even be sure whether a statement has a proof or not. And yet, despite not getting the answers he hoped for, Hilbert knew the right questions to ask. The answers produced great discoveries. Quote, I'd like to make the outrageous claim, that has a little bit of truth. That actually all of this that's happening now with the computer taking over the world, the digitalization of our society, of information in human society. You could say in a way is the result of a philosophical question that was raised by David Hilbert at the beginning of the century. Gregory Chaitin in a century of controversy over the foundations of mathematics, 2000.